Hello and welcome to another reverse engineering video. In this one I will be talking about decompilers and how they can trick us into believing that the code is different than it actually is. For that I will use one of the challenges from Angstrom CTF. The challenge name was Flux Submission Server and I have it loaded in Ghidra and it loaded fine, there was no issues while loading. Analysis also went fine. We can see an entry point, we can see a main function, and if we go to the main function, we can actually see the code that looks quite okay. But if we start looking into the code, trying to analyze and trying to understand what actually it does and how to get the flag, we can start seeing some problems with the code. One is this local variable called instack with some high uh, hex value. It's usually not how the Gitra represent local variables. They are as they are here. So basically it's not common to see this instack prefix with some high value um, after. But looking at the code, we actually don't see, or I didn't see what the issue is. So I yeah, went to actually analyze this assembly because that's the actually what should tell me the truth, how the code works. And if we look at the disassembly and we try to analyze the code and the corresponding disassembly, especially near one of the places, which is here, we can see that this code actually does not exactly the same as we see here. So for example, somewhere here, let me just find it. There's supposed to be some this is the sand. Okay, now I don't see the code. This is sand. Okay, there's a XOR instruction, which we don't actually see any XOR here. So what's going on? We see some XOR in here. We see some reading of the bytes, but we don't see it here. So actually the corresponding disassembly is not actually what this disassembly says us. So the, so the decompilation doesn't really is exactly as it should be according to the disassembly. So what is the problem with this function? The problem actually is the stack frame. So basically when we look at the decompilation we don't see how the stack frame is constructed. We see those local variables that Ghidra identified and created for us, but how the stack frame is actually constructed, we don't see it here. But if we go to the disassembly, we can see that actually quite a big number is being subtracted from RSP. And this is how the stack frame is being constructed. But if you look at the local variables, there, there's not that many local variables as it would seem from this subtraction. So how we can make it so that the stack frame is actually correct according to the disassembly? Well, we can fix that in Ghidra. So if we click here in this uh, function information error, we can right click and go to function. There is an edit stack frame option. And if we click that, we get another window, which is the stack editor. And here we can see all the local variables that Ghidra identified and how basically how the stack frame looks. So we can see here that the subtraction is uh, bigger than we have here. We have only 175 hex size. So what we can do, we can adjust the size by typing the number. And I will just add a few more bytes because the parameter offset is at eight. So I will add a few more bytes here. So basically we account for that. 
if we hit enter, we'll get those additional bytes. So we can save the stack frame, new stack frame. But when we save, actually Gidra discards our change because it doesn't see any variables being declared in this additional uh, area. So it just uh, thinks, okay, it's not needed. So I'll just discard because I don't need to keep track of it. So let's just do that again. 380, 390. And now what we'll do, we'll define few, we'll change data type for few of the offsets here. So we can press B a couple of times and it will cycle through byte, word and word and keyword data types. So we can declare some of the variables here. And I already know that it's needed for something I want to show you, but during the uh, CTF, when I was analyzing this challenge, it wasn't that clear. I mean, of course, it was clear in the end that we have to declare those variables here. But before actually analyzing more code, it wasn't that clear. So I know that I need to go up till, I think here, or maybe a few more, few more variables. And I think I need to go somewhere down somewhere around here I think also I need a variable but it even without the variable it will be uh, visible so I declare some of the new local variables in this additional area that I added so now when I save Ghidra won't discard it of course it will create a few local variables those that I declared but that's fine because we do want to have those additional variables because what was the point declaring them if we don't want them so now i have those local variables and if we go to our code which we saw before so this one is still not declared so probably i hit the wrong offset but the code looks different than it looked before you see, now we have this XOR operation here that basically wasn't here before. Before we had this line that gets the character, we had this line that was setting this red byte into some error structure, and then it was sent an incrementation of the index. But there was no really this line visible in the original code. So because Ghidra incorrectly analyzed the stack frame, the decompilation was actually missing one really important for this challenge line of code, which we saw actually in the listening because I showed you the XOR operation that was there, which was not here. So now we can see this XOR, it's here, and we can see that it is actually being uh, XORing some of those local variables that I just defined in this additional area. So now we can correctly analyze this decompilation and try to understand what the function is doing and how we can get the flag. So that was one tricky part in this challenge. I don't know if that was intentional, but that was actually quite good to understand and to find out that not always the decompilation is true and we need to be careful when we look at the decompilation because if it doesn't make sense maybe the compilation is not correct and then if so look in the disassembly and try to yeah just confirm whether what you see in the decompilation is correct or not and of course if it's not correct the best would be to fix it, but of course might not be possible to always fix it. In this case, it was possible to be fixed and to, to solve the challenge. So that one interesting caveat about the decompilation, just don't blindly trust what you see in this right pane in Gitra because it might not be correct. And just as a bonus, I will show you how the actual or maybe not the actual, but how it looked 
during the yeah CTF, the original code that was yeah analyzed and renamed, let's call it more correctly. Yeah, so this is the code. So we can see we have this XOR and we have some names that are more meaningful than the ones that I just showed before. And we can see some names that actually made sense and are helpful to analyze this challenge and to understand how the flag could be uh, obtained. Yeah, so that's more or less all I wanted to show. Just remember, don't blindly trust the decompilation because it's might not be what the program actually looks like. There might be some lines of the code that are being not correctly displayed. And of course, I guess that's that's fine. I mean, not always Ghidra can get the like pseudo code from the disassembly, but at least I would expect to see some information in that case. The problem in this challenge was that Ghidra actually was not telling any indication that the code that you are looking at might be incorrect. Sometimes it displays information at the top of the, of the function, actually here, after mangling of those local variables, we have to see a warning here that yeah, some variables overlap and that's fine. At least I know that something might not be correct. In the other case, there was no such info. We didn't see anything here. Yeah, no warnings. Yeah, so just be careful. What you see is not always what it is. And yeah, I hope you liked the video. And if so, please like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.